Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Affordable Flyers, Jim Campbell conducts Carbon Cub UL flight test at Oshkosh, BD4C kit offered with Builder Assist program, the Risen Aircraft program came to Oshkosh nonstop across the Atlantic. Welcome to Airborne Affordable Flyers, our programming designed to help you get and stay in aviation as affordably as possible. Overseen by the editorial staff of the award-winning Sport Plane Resource Guide, we know well the challenges faced by today's sport flyers, and we're here to help you enjoy flying to the utmost. Let's get into today's stories. Jim Campbell conducts Carbon Cub UL test flight at Oshkosh. Jim Campbell finally got the chance to fly the Carbon Cub UL off a grass strip and a recently plowed farm field and liked what he found. So we started with the Carbon Cub SS, which was historically our most popular airplane. And we said, how can we reinvest into that airframe, into the Carbon Cub SS, and get even better performance, get even lighter weight, get even simpler systems, integrate the most modern composite technology, titanium, you know, structures, those sorts of things. So we're just going through the entire airplane and reimagining everything and saying, hey, where can we save some weight? we can build the airplane as light as about 860 pounds. It's become my favorite of our tail dragger airplanes to fly, and uh, we are just pushing forward with doing what Cub Crafters does best, make really fun airplanes that are super capable in the backcountry. You've got your uh, access points designed well and good handhold, so yay for that. The other thing that I really enjoyed was the fact that, you know, it's your butt up a little bit and you've got a clear view over the nose, which in an airplane like this is not the norm. So that makes the taxi chores not only a whole lot easier, but safer, let's face it. What was a lot of fun, uh, notch of flaps, uh, blasting off of a grass runway, firewall forward, ease the stick forward. And about the time the stick's all the way forward, it's time to start bringing the stick back because you got flying speed. Full power and on the positive end of the energy profile, you've got a hell of a climb angle out. Uh, slow speed, uh, really obedient. Not a lot of dissymmetry uh, until you get well into the break and then there's a little bit of a fall off and all you got to do is ease pressure. You don't have to stick forward. You have to ease pressure and you're immediately into recovery mode. High frequency, low amplitude buffet throughout. Uh, each notch of flaps uh, trims the airplane up a little bit, uh, about a pound, pound and a half of uh, stick pressure each. Uh, the drag profile with that last notch is huge. Found the actual stall to be a non-event. Uh, and again, recovery is simply less than stick pressure. Uh, slip is obedient. Uh, I'm a little bit more bashful with it till I get to know the airplane, but I had no problem seeing 1,000 to 1,500 feet. Stability and control is outstanding. Um, and on top of it, boy, you've got some rudder on that, so you can get it way out of whack, and it just comes right on back. And the nice part about that, it was really obedient, not violent, but sure was swift. We did some off-field uh, takeoffs and landings. The gear on this will just take all kinds of crap. It's really nicely done. But the best part is, is even though we had a pretty good drop, it diminished the impact and there wasn't a whole lot of bounce left to it. It really took on a lot of the uh, uh, vertical force involved. Uh, taking off out of there, same procedure. Uh, pull flap, full power, get the nose forward, yank back, and off you go. And uh, there, I think we were off in a much uh, a shorter distance in the old field than my first takeoff. So it worked out really well. It's sweet, it's, it's light. Uh, it's surprisingly fast. Uh, it's going to be economical as all get out, especially since, well, auto gas. And you got to love that at various times. And uh, on top of it all, uh, the quality of workmanship that we've seen in Cub Crafters has just been outstanding. After the break, the FAA provides some status updates at AirVenture. There's a lot of places I get to at the end of the runway or in turnarounds that I need an engine running. So for me, it's very important to have a product that I'm absolutely confident with. I am very confident with the Trailblazer propeller. And when I'm flying air shows, I know that propeller's gonna be right for me.
The legendary BD4C program is building an exciting future for those who want a rugged four-seat family flyer with a proven history. The SureWings program produces a complete kit and builder assist program that gives you everything you need to be flying a BD4CS in record time. For conventional kit builders, BD Aviation has parts, partial kits, and full kits for the 190 mile per hour BD4C that has logged thousands of hours. Visit SureWings.com and BDAviation.com for more details. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. The FAA provides some status updates at AirVenture. Day 4 of AirVenture featured an underwhelming conference from FAA leadership, thanks to the surprise absence of Administrator Michael Whitaker. Worse, the substitute feds in attendance had little new to say about Mosaic, outside of the fact that they expected it in the late spring of 2025, before other staffers expressed a hope that it would actually be ready by Oshkosh 2025, and so the industry waits on pins and needles for far longer than promised. CRA shows off their latest two-seat design. The CRA 8 is an advanced ultralight helicopter kit, as defined internationally. It was showcased at the CRA booth at EAA's Oshkosh AirVenture. The latest design, the CRA 8, is a two seater side by side ultralight helicopter with a 140 horsepower Rotax 915 IS engine. It was built with several features for increased function and comfort, including ample instrumentation a carbon fiber semi monocoque cockpit, adjustable tail rotor pedals, and a configurable dashboard. Development was completed in 2018, and 30 have since been distributed throughout South America and Europe. Delta Hawk loses weight and gains options. It's been years since we've seen a new American power plant, much less one that takes advantage of truly modern technology. But Delta Hawk is readying for production and has a number of OEMs drooling over the prospect of a Jet A powered GA mill. The good, even great news is this. They've taken a stunning amount of weight out of the initial install and at least three different horsepower ratings are already in the works, with more to come. As the first journalist to fly the Delta Hawk, we continue to be impressed. Timber Tiger's K's Speedster readies for first flight. Still in the works, but close to first flight, is the Timber Tiger K Speedster, a bird that harkens back to a classic look that is way too rare these days. Beautifully lofted, the Speedster offers an open cockpit, side-by-side -side seating configuration that utilizes the equally classic-looking Werner 9S radial engine, or a more conventional Lycoming O320 or O360, expected to cruise about 130 knots. The Speedster kits are soon to be available, and the Timber Tiger folks are already accepting initial orders. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. BD4C kit offered with Builder Assistance Program. BD Aircraft, renowned for decades of innovative light aircraft design, has recently announced a strategic partnership with Shorewings. This collaboration aims to integrate Shorewings' cutting-edge avionics and safety systems into BD's aircraft lineup, enhancing performance, reliability, and safety. BD Aviation was specifically formed by Gratia Aero Group to make use of a license from BD Aero to continue manufacturing, selling, and supporting the BD-4C airframe. By combining BD's expertise in aircraft design with Sherwings' advanced technology solutions, the partnership is set to deliver state-of-the-art flying experiences for both recreational and professional pilots. Additionally, the synergy between the two companies is expected to accelerate the development of new models and features, ultimately pushing the boundaries of modern aviation. A BD-4CS Sherwings Edition Complete Aircraft Kit, consisting of a comprehensive set of integrated equipment for the best possible flying experience, is expected to be offered at an industry-disruptive price point. Sherwings says that their goal was to create the, quote, ideal four-place kit aircraft, offering safety, performance, and affordability. Where we could advance safely, we did. Where we could increase performance without compromising safety, we did. Lastly, where we could achieve efficiencies to lower costs without compromising safety or performance, we did." End quote. After these messages, the Risen Aircraft program made it to Oshkosh.
fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. The Risen Aircraft Program came to Oshkosh nonstop across the Atlantic. They flew all the way across the Atlantic in a Rotax-powered Risen, burning only 42 gallons. And we finally got a close look at what could be the coolest aircraft at AirVenture. Sporting gorgeous workmanship, evident even after thousands of miles of transatlantic efforts, the Rotax-powered Risen is a stunner. Now equipped with everything from the miserly R912 all the way to the comparatively monstrous R916, the retractable geared Risen has a sleek profile due to the wide stance V-tail, a humongous bubble canopy, and some of the slickest glasswork we'd seen at Oshkosh. Speeds at or above 200 knots are apparently not out of the question, but the Atlantic crossing was kept down to 165 knots for fuel economy purposes. With 14 in the U.S. at present and 40 around the world, the approximately $350,000 Risen offers the ability to smoke just about anything with an R916 so far. Parachute equipped, there is quite a waiting list for U.S. planes, so check this out ASAP. We were supposed to meet up with the Italian crew in Florida, but the recent hurricane may have messed that up. Still, we're hoping to reschedule the flight test ASAP. We will keep you updated. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.